What's up, YouTubes? Welcome back to my channel, Richard on Data. My name is Richard, and this is the channel where we talk about data. So it's almost the new year, which means people are starting to make their resolutions. So you've got your quitting smoking, getting out of debt, losing weight, eating healthy, all that good stuff. But there's tons of people out there who are thinking about making big career moves in this year as well. So for those of you out there who are thinking about data science, I thought what better of a time to actually share my story and how I got into data science myself. Maybe it resonates with some of you out there. Maybe it's something you keep in the back of your mind as you head into 2020. Hopefully, we'll see. Before I actually get into my story, all I ask of you guys is to smash the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so in the past, then hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. New videos from Richard on Data every week. So back in the day when I was growing up, I had always heard you should figure out what you want to do with your life as early as possible. That way you can start early and you get a head start on it and you'll get good at it. And I definitely think there's a giant element of truth to that. Here's the problem though, and I think a lot of people fall into this boat. I had no idea what I wanted to do. Something that I always knew that I was good at was talking to people and building relationships with people, but I didn't know how to monetize that. So a little bit on the whole communicating with people, talking to people a little bit later in the story, but here's the thing. I've always loved money, and I have no shame in admitting that. Benjamin Franklin, you're a good friend of mine. You never let me down. I always have enjoyed teaching, but the problem in society today is that teachers are seriously underpaid, so I didn't want to do that, but I didn't want to chase money the entire way or I would have just gone into medicine, and I honestly can't handle the stress and strain of medicine. Now, when I was growing up, I did discover pretty early on that I was really good at math. So I never actually did statistics or anything like that in high school, but your standard algebra, algebra two, pre-calc, calculus, I was really good at all of it. And these are really subjects that a lot of people out there, they kind of struggle with. So it got me thinking, if I'm talented at this, maybe that's something that I can uniquely monetize on. So when I started my first year at college, I tentatively decided on stats as my major. And I wanted to do stats rather than pure mathematics because it seemed easier, at least naively, to apply to various industries than pure mathematics would be. Keep in mind, I had no interest whatsoever in being a college professor, in doing research, in developing the field. I just wanted to work on cool problems using some kind of quantitative skill set. And I took my first intro stats class in college. It was all right. I don't have really any strong opinions about it one way or the other. I wasn't super passionate about it. I didn't dislike it either. It was just an okay class. I figured with that class that I was just beginning to scratch the surface. So in my next year of college, I signed up for this 400 level theoretical statistics class and whew, it was a disaster. This was actually the only class that I've ever straight up failed in my entire life. Now, I do have my criticisms about how the class was run, the material, general stuff like that, but at the end of the day, I myself do take full ownership for failing that class, and I realize it was because of my own failure to plan and my inability to get excited and to see the bigger picture. You see, theoretical statistics can be a pretty abstract topic. I don't dislike it, I don't like to bag on it, I think it's important in the grander scheme of things, but if you don't have something to really be excited about and you're jumping headfirst into theoretical statistics, you don't necessarily know what you're getting yourself into, you could be setting yourself up for some problems if you do that. Now right around that time, I actually ended up changing universities. And the reason for that is a different story for a different day. But the long and the short of it was, I was going into an entirely different program, an entirely different curriculum, different everything. So I took a class in intro probability, no big deal, it was fine, whatever. But then a year after that, I actually took a class in data mining. So it started getting into linear models, 
machine learning, clustering, classification, that kind of stuff, and that absolutely blew my mind. So honestly, after that, the rest of school was great. I took some more classes in applied statistical principles, some statistical computing, more linear models, more machine learning, that kind of stuff, and accidentally I'd really stumbled into something that I'd actually liked. I had gone into the major completely blindly, not knowing anything about it, not knowing what data mining was, what machine learning was, what linear models were, none of that. I knew nothing about it. But going through school, it became clear to me statistics can be applied to so many different domains. I saw the applications of it to automotive, healthcare, insurance, pharma, whatever it could be. You could apply statistics to it in some way, shape, or form, and it just got me enormously excited about it, and it, it convinced me I had picked the right path. Then right around that time, I started to hear about this terminology of data science. And I did a video a little while back about what data science actually is. And I didn't understand it to that level of granularity. But I got the broader idea that there's a tremendous amount of power when you combine statistics with programming and computing abilities. Programming was never necessarily something I had a super strong background in, especially before getting into college, but I learned R in my college classes, and to be honest, it was pretty intuitive and easy to me. A lot of people, they do find R a little bit challenging, and they find it to have a learning curve. I don't know what it was about me, I found it pretty easy and intuitive. That's probably because I was coming from a statistics background. R was the first programming language I'd ever picked up, and when I learned other programming languages down the road, I actually had more difficulty getting into those than I did with R, whereas for most people, it's the exact opposite. So, I don't know, who knows? It is what it is. So after college, I went back to grad school because, guess what, in the data science world, it's the sad fact of the matter that you are going to be better off if you had a master's or a PhD. And again, I had no interest in developing the field, doing research, any of that. So I was totally content with, number one, just getting the credentials that go behind a master's, but then going back and conquering my nemesis, which was the theoretical statistics stuff, which three years ago I really sucked at. So at that point, I was in a pretty good position. I got my first couple internships while I was still in school, and there were naturally more surprises, both good and bad. And I'd say the biggest surprise and the biggest thing I learned during that process was that I was a super enthusiastic ignoramus. What I mean is this. So this is definitely true in the statistics world, and I've heard it from people coming from other disciplines as well. Basically, you come out of school, and the things which you learned in school, think of that as a hammer. Now, you're going out looking for a nail to that hammer. And the problem is, real world data, real world data sets, real world problems which you're gonna solve are way more complex than that model is gonna allow for. Problems in the real world are often a lot more nebulous, unstructured, the client doesn't even really know what they want sometimes. These are just not necessarily problems which you run into in your statistics or your computer science or even your raw data science program which you might do in school. Actually, when I was in school, there wasn't even a formal data science program that was even established yet. Now, remember when I said earlier in this video that I always enjoy talking to people, communicating with them, building relationships? Well, here's what I found. In the data science work that I've done, so literally every job, every internship, and with every single individual client engagement that I've ever had, the data science work that I have done has operated something like a consulting engagement. That is, you're working on problems which don't have clear or objective answers. You have to talk to your client, you have to sit down with them, understand their problems, try and live in their world, empathize with them, all that good stuff. What ends up happening is, that guides your creative process. I keep harping on in all my videos that data science is a super creative field, 
And it's the communication with your client as well as the understanding that you pick up of the domain which ends up guiding your thought process. It's now happened to me several times in my work that a client will ask me to do something or they'll ask me to solve some problem and then I get all inquisitive. I ask them questions like, why are we doing this? What's the purpose of this analysis? What problem are we really trying to solve? Just general things like that. And then I come up with various other ideas that are a little bit beyond the scope of what was asked for, then I'll have the conversation with the client about whatever this idea is, maybe I'll make a little prototype of it, just little things like that, and they've come back and they've said, wow, I didn't even know that that was possible, because they're not mathematically or statistically minded. Now these ideas piggyback on various things that I've learned in my day, things in the statistics and the computing realms, but it's really moments like that which give me the most joy that I've ever experienced in my work. Far more so even than prototyping a really nice neural network that has really good performance on the test set. Although, let's be honest, that is pretty awesome still. So at the end of the day, I love data science, but I stumbled upon it by complete accident. And I found it because it's a natural marriage of a couple different things that I really enjoy, specifically communicating with people and statistics. And it also brought together something that I didn't even realize at the time that I enjoyed, which was programming. If you're good at a couple of those things yourself, guess what? You may not be good at that other skill, or you may not know that you're good at it, but it's something that you can work on, foster, and really grow. And at that point, you have a really strong chance of being a successful data scientist if that's a field that you want to get into. I hope this resonated with somebody out there who might be thinking about data science as a career path. Now again, if you have a mathy mind like me and you also like building relationships, granted, you do need both of those qualities, but if you think you have them, I really do hope you find a way to get into the field and it brings you as much joy as it has me to this point so far. So thanks for watching this video. Until next time, Richard on Data.